Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Lecture 62. We have been discussing about the general orbit perturbation theory. So, if in that context, till now we have looked into uh, uh, how the uh, due to the extra potential term or the extra perturbation term, the equation will look like. Now, actually, we have to uh, find out the terms. Uh, if you remember that uh, we have written r double dot equal to minus del u plus r and thereafter also in the force term we have written this equation so all these things till now we have worked out so today we will discuss about the potential of a body of arbitrary shape and using this, then uh, this will be our first step to know how the perturbation term uh, already we have looked that mathematically how it is arising in the, but till now we have looked into the f form. But say if we have this term minus del r, so this del r equal to f, okay. and we want to know actually how does uh, or uh, what will be the feature of this function f here or the force f here okay what are the terms involved in that so th this we need to derive so we'll do it for uh, today for oblate sphere means you you have a sphere but it's a here say the x and y dimension are or the i x x and i y y the moment of inertia about the x axis and the y axis it is the same, but i z z it is not the same. So, this that is i x x equal to i y y and this is not equal to i z z. So, this particular part we are uh, going to look through the derivation for uh, a body of an arbitrary shape. First, we will write the equation and thereafter we will take this particular case and work out how this term will appear. Okay. But before that one correction from the um, last time that uh, we have written the omega equation in which we dropped out one term and uh, again there was a, a small uh, error in that particular term. So, I will correct that okay. so, because we are going little fast. So, uh, we have less time. So, it is likely that some of the typing error creeps in. f theta minus r sin u and this is cot i. Instead of cot i last time uh, it was written as cos i. Okay. On, only once the lecture was over, so I noticed that. So, th this term last time it was written as cos i which is not correct. This is the correct term here okay. and this multiplied by f a. Okay, so, with this now we start with our uh, main topic of uh, discussion today.
Okay, so look into this configuration. Let us first consider that there are two masses, m and m1. Okay. You can show by a small letter or capital letter; it does not matter. So two particles. two particles of masses m1 and m located at p1 which is described by vector r1 and p and p described by vector r respectively now consider that this mass m is small okay as compared to so m is much smaller than m1 so under this condition so we can get the potential due to the main body or the particle m1 okay so potential at p due to m1 can be written using u equal to minus g times m1 divided by r1 okay where r1 is r1 equal to magnitude of vector r1 R one equal to R minus R one. Okay, so these are the information available to us, and as usual, you know that uh, uh, if you want to write the equation of motion in the reference frame, the inertial reference frame, so we can write m one times R one double dot. This is the motion of particle. capital which is given by p uh, p1 here we have to this is p1 so m1 times r1 double dot this will be equal to m times m1 g divided by r1 cube times r1 and sin will be plus because the force is directed along r1 direction similarly for the small mass we can write this as m r double dot this equal to minus m m1 g divided by r1 q so there is no problem in this we have done it numerous times so this is the same thing okay so using this then the equation of motion for the smaller mass can be written as if we use this so see here uh, m this is multiplied by m m r double dot and then on the right hand side what are the terms which will appear so we know that from our earlier experience or the uh, or our earlier discussion we have written this as minus m times del u so you will get this quantity this expression from here okay so thus 
the motion of mass m under the action of or the gravitational acceleration of mass m 1 can be written as shown above. Now, in the case there are number of masses there are many small particles then the potential at a potential at p potential at p can be written as u equal to or we can write here just like the u 1 ok to be to represent it better. So, we will write it as u 1. So, here we will write as u i and u will indicate as i equal to 1 to n the summation over n number of particles. So, potential due to n number of particles. So, this is minus g r i there we have used r 1 for this notation. So, for better representation instead of using capital R we will use the small r. So, this is then the potential due to a number of particles and therefore, then the equation of motion for the small mass this can be written as if we go back and use this equation. So, this is m times del u. So, minus m times del u. Here this quantity we have written as 1, where u 1 is defined like this. So, the format of the equation does not change, it remains the same. Okay. So, this constitutes our basic principle how the potential at a point p can be worked out. Now, if the body is or either if uh, instead of a body uh, instead of particles discrete particles instead of discrete particles if we have a finite size solid body under whose action particle p of mass m is moving. Then the above summation needs to be replaced by integration sign. So, now we are talking about uh, here we have a
body of arbitrary shape and there may be a elementary mass located in this here it is shown very big, but uh, it is infinitesimally small we can assume the distance from here to here we can show it by rho this is the vector to this point and then of course, we have the point here p whose radius vector we can show as r this distance we can write as p. So, find the potential at p. So, what will be the potential at that point? So, let us assume that this mass is d m okay, elementary mass and based on that then we calculate the potential here and then we integrate over the whole body. So, d u is then minus g times d m divided by the distance p which is in this case is nothing but we have written this we can write as q this point and this point as o this point we can write as q. Okay, so, p q distance is p magnitude equal to p this is nothing but the distance p q. Okay, so, this gives us potential and what is the value for the p? So, for the p already we have written p is the vector r minus rho and if we take dot product of with the self. So, this becomes p a square So, throughout we have taken the vector approach this is not the only way of doing the scalar approach is also there and uh, many of the books may be discussing this matter in some different way, but this is one of the most elegant way of doing the things. So, this becomes then r square minus 2 r times rho and the angle between these two let us say we write this as theta or phi whichever the notation you prefer let us say this is phi this angle is phi here. So, this is phi plus rho square and if we take rho r square common. So, this will be 1 minus two rho by r cos phi And therefore, potential at p due to the elementary mass this can be written as minus g d m divided by p is nothing but r 1 minus 2 rho cos phi And if we have to find out the potential due to the whole body, so we just need to sum it over the whole body and then r is independent of the sum is uh, integration over the body because it depends the integration just depends on the mass. 
we are the Rouville factor ok and therefore, we can write this as 1 minus 2 rho by r cos phi plus rho by r square to the power 1 by 2. We can write it in this way. Okay, where x has nothing to do with, or we can use some other notation, maybe. Uh, let us say we write here w, where w is nothing but the quantity from this place to this place, and this expression has got a standard uh, representation in mathematics, but we will do it by expanding here rather than uh, just going to that first. Still uh, let us write this, then u becomes minus g by r, it can be represented as ok. And what is d m? d m is also a function of say if, uh, if the mass is the density is not uniform. So, this will the mass of uh, this is small mass d m here elementary volume will be taking. So, this will depend on that the density also ok. So, but this is not we are uh, featuring here we go here in a simple way. But of course, in the case of uh, uh, if you want to have like uh, you, you have a body where uh, the density from one place to another place is uh, differing and if you are ready to model take the mathematical uh, mathematical uh, complexity into account and then you have the observation data available. So, it is a possible that uh, you can uh, say where the density is more and where the density is less. The, this has happened in the case of the Apollo satellite. So, Apollo satellite and uh, still it is a going on those work the uh, many of the observation data for the lunar satellite. So, uh, from there the uh, they were reduced and then the perturbation acceleration were worked out and using that it was shown that some of the places where the mass may be may be more dense. Okay, so, those kind of analysis it is a possible. Okay. So, you will find it interesting this topic uh, as we progress. So, 1 by 1 plus x under root what we have written. So, this whole thing except d m it can be represented in a series form like this is p n cos phi times rho by r to the power n d m, where p n is called the Legendre polynomial. So, this is one of the representation and this representation if we reduce in terms of Legendre function. So, there the spherical harmonics they come into picture this is another way of describing the things, but the approach right now we are taking uh, it is a little simpler ok. So, if we take a point close to the a point p close to the body or the main body then the rho by r will be of the range around 1 and in that case in this case 
द सीरीज सोन एवर कन्वर्जेस वेरी स्लोली एंड देन मॉडलिंग यू in terms of this series it requires large number of terms so in the case of the moon so once the lunar gravity modeling is done so at that time there are lakhs of terms from this place it can be expanded okay rather than expressing here in this format it's expressed in terms of legendre function okay but where the spherical harmonics they come into picture okay and in that beside the main gravity term which we write as gm by r many other terms they appear okay lakhs of other terms will appear and using that then the lunar gravity modeling or the potential due to the moon or the perturbation arising on the lunar satellite due to due to the moon so they are worked out okay. so th this is because of this region so if you are in the nearby region where the rho by r is nearly equal to 1 so in this case this series converges very slowly okay and then the modeling of you in terms of this series requires a large number of terms so it may be in terms of lakhs but if rho by r this is much greater than uh, much less than 1 means r is quite large as compared to rho much less than 1 then the evop series converges fast and only few terms only a few terms will suffice in such cases that is all higher order terms can be neglected okay so uh, this uh, one by uh, we require we have written uh, actually once we go back here this part already we have written here p equal to the quantity in this place and this we are going to work out so using the binomial expansion we can work it out so this is the equation that we are having and if we expand it to a few terms this is g by r here so 1 minus 1 by 2 rho by r cos phi whole square then plus minus 1 by 2 minus 3 by 2 okay so 
So, this way there will be an infinite number of terms in this expansion and uh, this expansion is not very difficult to work out using the Taylor series you can uh, do the expansion of um, any function. Uh, this kind of function is a very easy to do it and th this is a very standard equation available in the books. minus 2 rho by r cos phi plus and so on the higher order terms. plus now if we break the bracket here. So, this becomes rho by r cos phi plus minus sign minus 1 by 2 rho by r square plus from this place we have 2 to 4 8 3 by 8 times minus 2 rho by r cos phi whole square d. by 8 and if we square it. So, this becomes 4 rho a square divided by r a square cos a square phi plus rho to the power 4 r to the power 4 minus 2 into 2 4 rho this becomes rho q by r q cos phi. So, we ignore the higher order terms means the third order and the fourth uh, the third degree and the fourth degree terms will be ignoring and if we do that cos phi. So, that means only this term and this term we are then accounting. So, then this becomes minus rho a square by 2 r a square and from here we get plus 3 by 2 3 by 2 and then rho a square by r a square cos a square phi. So, here we are neglecting higher order term. rho square by r square we take outside and 2 also from the denominator. <coughs> so, this gets reduced to 3 cos square phi minus 1, 3 cos square phi
Okay, now of course then uh, we can write this as minus g dm by r minus g by r square rho cos phi dm minus g by 2 r cube rho a square this we can represent as u equal to u 0 plus u 1 plus u 2. So, if we take higher order terms, then u can be shown as u 0 plus u 1 plus u 2 plus u 3 and so on. And if you remember the term we have written minus g by r u equal to in terms of the legend polynomial from 0 to n this summation was and the p n cos phi and then we had rho by r to the power n d m. This is what we have written. So, this implies that the first term is equivalent to if we now expand it. So, this will be p 0 cos phi and d m minus g by r <coughs> summation uh, summation uh, we are breaking the summation. So, this is p 1 cos phi rho by r d m and plus so on. Okay, so, immediately you can see that this term is corresponding to here u 0, this term is corresponding to u 1 and similarly the next term will correspond to u 2 and so on. So, uh, these two are the same okay, and this is the way it is expanded. So, this is one of the approach but there is another approach in terms of the Legendre function okay, and uh, that is done uh, where we get in terms of the spherical harmonics. Uh, <coughs> if time permits, uh, I will take that up or otherwise uh, I will just give you the supplementary material uh, on that particular topic because already we have crossed the number of lectures and uh, we have many other things to cover. Okay. So, but, but this is the idea involved in working with this problem, this is the ma basic idea. Here instead of writing 2 here in this place, we can also write it as, it is a little more convenient to represent because this is going like this way. So, immediately you can see that what does it mean if we expansion we are uh, expanding. So, the second term the third term will appear here. So, this is corresponding to u 2. So, that means the r cube here the term so let us say that uh, I expand it one more term here and write. So, that you also get the idea. So, the next term will be minus g by uh, this rho by r we can take it outside uh, r we can take outside. So, rho will come here and uh, r we can take out from this place and write here g by r square. So, you can see that g by r square appearing here this is also appearing here in this place and rest inside is rho p 1 cos phi and d m multiplied by d m minus g. Similarly, here in this place if we expand it, so this will be g and then p 2 cos phi 
rho a square dm r a square we can take it outside and this becomes r cube. So, immediately from this place we can refer that P0 uh, cos phi from this place immediately you can see this quantity is equal to 1. Okay. From here we can guess that this quantity will be P0 cos phi this will be equal to 3 by 2 cos square phi minus 1 by 2 and similarly this is P1 not P0 this is P2 cos phi. P2 cos phi and P1 cos phi from this place we see that this is simply cos phi. So, for this way the series can be if we are able to handle that much of mathematics. So, we can see from this place how this works, but in mathematics this Legendre polynomial it is a the well researched and well documented. So, any book you can pick up. Uh, and uh, the books like the uh, crazy uh, on engineering mathematics. So, you can refer to those books and you will get these materials. So, we stop here and then we will continue in the next lecture. Thank you very much.